Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good whatever time it is where you are. Welcome to Math Minute number 41. We're looking at something rather specific today. If you are using the TI Inspire platform, Inspire CX, CX2, CX CAS, CX2 CAS, I suppose, this will apply to you. How do we graph a scatter plot? How do we find a line of best fit on that scatter plot? How do we measure how good the fit is? How do we find things like the coefficient of correlation, r, and r squared? I have a sample data set. I'll include it in the description down below if you'd like to download it and follow along. But the basic idea is this. Once we get our data set in, in this particular case, I'm looking at a bunch of cities, their latitude, and then the average temperature in January for that city. And I want to try to discover if there's any kind of relationship between latitude and average temperature. The first thing I might do is guess, what do I expect to see when I build a scatter plot right now? Remember, latitude starts at zero at the equator, and then we're just gonna do northern hemisphere here to keep it simple. As you move toward the North Pole, latitude gets greater, going toward 90 degrees latitude at, you know, Santa's house, the North Pole. What would you expect temperature to do in January as we move to those higher and higher latitudes? Hopefully you'll say something like, oh, I would expect an inverse relationship. You would expect as you move to higher latitudes, that average temperature in January actually gets lower. That's what we call an inverse relationship. Or on a scatter plot, what that's going to look like is that all the little dots go down roughly as we move to the right. And that's also called a negative correlation. But once we have all this data in the calculator, all the latitudes, all the temperatures, how do we actually figure out what's the scatter plot? How do we build the scatter plot? You'll see I've done a little bit of the work for us. I've got the column labels here. Column A is gonna be the city. Column B is the latitude. Again, this is north latitude. We're only doing northern hemisphere cities. And then column C I've called average January temp, average Jan temp. One thing you wanna make sure when you use the CX platform is that you don't put any spaces in these column names because it'll tell you there's some kind of syntax error like jump space at all oh, cannot accept change invalid input yeah okay so if we just change it to jump at well now it'll accept it right so one thing we want to make sure that we do is type in our labels without any spaces whatsoever and then we type in all our data making sure if we get to the end of this list i think i have like 42 nope 37 35 cities in this list just make sure that these line up. You don't want any extra data sitting in some of these columns because then the calculator is going to object. There are two ways to get the data that we're interested in. In this case, the line of best fit. Probably the simpler way is to press control. And so that's this button over here on your calculator. Control I, which is going to add a new tab to our document and come down here to option five data and statistics. I'm going to hit enter here on option five. Oh my gosh, look at all these cities, right? I've got Mumbai, Moscow, Havana, Beirut. It doesn't appear like there's any particular order to these cities at all right now, and that's because there's not. We have to bring order to the chaos here. We have to click to add our variables, X variable going left to right, Y variable going up and down. Again, in this case, we wanna see well, how does the latitude affect that average temperature? And so it makes most sense back in this spreadsheet page here to let column B, our latitude, be the X variable. And so back on this tab here, 2.2, I can just click and it's gonna give me those different column labels I've selected. And so we're gonna pick out latitude. Oh, wow. Now it's created some kind of line plot for me. I guess I've got some close latitudes here, 41, 41, 41, 42, 43, etc. So I've got several different latitudes represented multiple times, but there's no Y variable right now. This is literally just a count of how many cities there are at each given latitude. I have to come over here to the left of my calculator screen. And again, I have to click to add the variable. In this case, I wanna look how is the temperature changing as the latitude changes. So I click average January temperature, Wow, that is a nice little relationship, right? I've got a scatter plot. It has chosen the scale of the x-axis and the scale of the y-axis for me. If I don't like this scale, I can kind of use my uh, mouse here to kind of hover over. Let's see, can I get it to do it? Yeah, so that thing will just kind of move it back and forth. 
Uh, I can do the same thing over here on the Y axis. I can just move it up and down. But if I wanna scale, I think I need to click Control. Yeah, there we go. Oh no, that didn't work. I thought it was gonna work. Here we go. If I go down to zero, and now I move up or down, you can see it's not just moving the graph, it's actually stretching the Y scale entirely. So I can control how these are scaled. I can do the same thing on the X axis when I get that little blue up and down line. I can actually change, I can compress the axes, I can spread it out if I want to. So there are lots of things I could do to change the way that the scatter plot looks right now. But again, I'm not mainly interested in how the scatter plot looks. I wanted that line of best fit. We can tell we're definitely correct about the relationship in general. It appears that as we increase our latitude, that means we get closer and closer to the North Pole. That average temperature in January, in degrees Fahrenheit, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, does indeed get smaller. So there are two ways to access this line of best fit. And again, I'm showing you the easier way right from the scatter plot. On our calculator, we're going to click menu and we wanna go here to option four for analyze. And then I wanna come down here to option six for regression. Regression is a calculator or a computer's way to generate a line of fit. When we're doing this by hand, we can just sketch a line of fit, right? We draw whatever we wanna draw but the calculator has a special method to compute the line of best fit, the line that is in some sense closest to all of the data. So I'm gonna click on regression and you can see there are lots of options. Now, some of these you might study later on. There are certainly contexts where you want an exponential regression, maybe even a quadratic regression. But right now we're just interested in your normal old slope intercept form linear regression and it's gonna calculate it for me. All this does is it shows the regression. I click this, bam, there's the line of best fit, negative 1.26x roughly plus 90.86. So what is this telling me? It means that my slope here, rise over run, right? Average temperature over latitude is going down by 1.26 degrees for each additional degree of latitude. In other words, as I move to the right here, every time I increase that latitude by just one degree, so I go one degree closer to the North Pole, my average temperature is gonna drop about 1.26 degrees. So that is that negative slope, that negative correlation we expected. And then here, my y-intercept is basically telling me at zero degrees latitude, so on the equator, I would expect average temperature in January to be just above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. There is a way right now from this screen to also get that R and R squared information, the coefficient of correlation, basically how good this fit is. It looks pretty good. If I were guessing, I would say, yeah, it seems like latitude is probably capturing, I don't know, 90% of the information we need to know in order to predict the temperature. We have a few outliers here, one at 63 degrees latitude, really low, minus 16.4 degrees for average temperature in January. We have something a little higher here, 64 degrees latitude, 31 uh, degrees Fahrenheit for the temperature. Uh, again, kind of an outlier over here at nine degrees latitude, we had some city that was only 61 degrees average temperature in January. But for the most part, there really aren't that many outliers like that. So I'd expect that the fit is really good here. I'm gonna come back here to this spreadsheet tab. And in order to get that R and R squared information, I click on this button menu. That's where all the special functions live. And I'm gonna go here again to option four. This time it says statistics. And I want option one, stat calculations. So there are a variety of things we could calculate here. You can see several of these are those other regressions that we didn't do. But again, what we're gonna be interested in is your regular old slope intercept form regression. So that is option three here. And we do have to give the calculator some instructions. It wants to know what is the independent variable, what's the X list. It wants to know what is the dependent variable, what's the Y list. And then it will save the function for us in a function slot on the calculator. Frequency list you can ignore, we don't need that here. Category list you can ignore. But then we do wanna make sure that our results are not gonna overwrite anything else. So our X list, you might remember, was actually the second column, that's column B. So I would type B, and then if I hit Control, open parentheses, it's gonna do those square brackets that I need. Uh, for the Y list, same thing, C, Control, open parentheses, and that's column C. And then I'm just gonna press tab, 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 several times. And again, the results, I just wanna make sure I'm not overwriting any of my data. I think we only had items in column A, B, and C. 
So really anything D and later should be fine. So E, sure, why not? I click OK and oh my gosh, where's the data? Well, notice we're all the way down here at row 12. So we just need to go up for a while. And there it is, starting in column E, title, linear regression, MX plus B. Reg equation, format, MX plus B. And you might notice here, oh, slope, negative 1.26, which was exactly the same as the slope we saw here on our scatter plot page. Y-intercept, 90.8607, exactly the same as the Y-intercept we saw here on our spread, on our, sorry, on our data and statistics tab on our scatter plot. But then we also get this other information, R squared and R. Now I said I thought it was a pretty good fit. I was thinking maybe it's capturing 90% of what we need. We can see R here is saying, okay, actually we're capturing about 86% of what we need to know for temperature from the latitude of the city. So there is some 14% that's accounting for other stuff. I don't know what it would be. Yeah, I really don't know what it would be. Why, you know, certain cities would have different temperatures. Maybe they're close to the ocean or something, so they're a little cooler. Maybe they're more inland, so they're a little warmer. Whatever it might be, there is other stuff than just latitude, but clearly most of temperature is coming from where you're located on the planet, how much sun you're getting, and so forth. R squared, recall, is literally the square of R. So if we took this negative point... 8, 6, 2, 4, 4, I think that's probably far enough, 7, I'll go one more, times that same number, negative 0 0.862447, we're going to get 0 0.743814, 0 0.743814, and then it rounds, you know, so I'm off by a little bit, but that's literally just the square of R. Uh, this gives us different, slightly different information. It lets us think about a, a spectrum of values. Anything close to zero is always a weak correlation. Anything close to one is going to be a strong correlation. So again, this is telling us pretty strong relationship. The fact that R itself is negative is telling us it was a negative correlation. But that's information we can get the calculator to give us by performing this special kind of linear regression. One other thing to show you, just so you know it, on the scatter plot itself, we actually can get that R and R squared information, or at least I think R squared. You can always just kind of look around in these menus. Oh gosh, I did not want to do that. Can I undo that? Yes, okay, very good. Hey, look at that. That should not be there. I did not do anything to get that to show. If you press menu, two for plot properties and you go all the way down here to the bottom clear all and then you undo that clear it's showing r squared at least on the computer maybe there's a different option on your calculator comment down below find this for me how do we get r squared to show on the scatter plot itself you can let me know and i'll pin your comment that's it for me today pretty straightforward tutorial that's how you deal with a data set in a ti inspire calculator of some variety cx CX, CAS, et cetera, all the different calculators. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, let me know what I messed up. I'm sure there was something, and otherwise I'll see you all next time.